rolls in life ain't very pretty. When you're down, that's where you'll stay. I'm sorry. Here we are. Off to a good start, huh? Here we are yet again with another tale by the good doctor. Chuck of the tingles. I got a new camera set up. I have a, a tripod balanced on a chair that's definitely not going to fall, I hope. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, another Dr. Chuck Tingle book. I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I've slowly been incorporating myself more and more into the Tingleverse, and I think I have almost, I don't know if it's a sequel to this one, but there's definitely another Chuck Tingle book that looks like it's called, or the title looks like a sequel to this one. But first, we got to get through the we, we have to get through Star Wars before we get to Empire. So let's see what happens when we read Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt by the good doctor Chuck Tingle. Where does the miracle of science end and magic begin? Some people would say never that Magic is nothing more than something we can't quite understand yet, but eventually will. Just because a force seems mysterious and exotic doesn't mean that it can't be quantified later on. As a young researcher, I haven't been around in my field long enough to see any of these enormous changes take place, but I like to remind myself about things in the present that must have seemed like magic to those in the past. That's actually kind of insightful. Electricity alone could have been framed in another way decades ago, considered the result of hours upon hours of careful black magic. I need to read that again, because I butchered it. Electricity alone could have been framed in another way decades ago, considered the result of hours upon hours of careful black magic. Of course, I know better. Magic isn't real, nor the various mystical trappings that come along with it. Love at first sight, or luck, just to name a few. I'm a staunch skeptic, as anyone else with my job, a research assistant at Rebel Biological Labs, should be. Not even a hard-line skeptic like me can't help but feel a little twinge of magic in the air when they first hear the news about Hunter Tuck Island. The now private island was recently... The now private island was recently purchased by a rather eccentric billionaire who immediately went to work doing clone research and creating several living copies of himself. At first, the news of this small island colony was met by various scoffs of doubt, but as time went on and evidence was presented, the findings were quickly regarded as scientific truth. Of course, there are a whole slew of ethical arguments to be addressed here, especially because the clones were not exact replicas, but rather mutants of the original sample biologically programmed to be less intelligent worker drones. These drones were then used to build an entirely new surface. Why did I add the word surface? These drones were then used to build an entirely new infrastructure on the island. I was ecstatic. Finally, the first massive shift in biology, and I am poised on the front lines of progress. But once the breakthroughs on Hunter Tuck Island became regarded as scientific fact, the ability to recreate such incredible results was quickly locked up tight. I can't blame them. After all, once we have the ability to create these worker drone clones, the business potential is almost unlimited. The entire industry would be a gold mine, redefining the entire world economy. Excuse me. Of course, the government was quick to step in and put a stop to all of this. Regardless of what a league of worker drone clones could do for progress, there were just too many people getting worked up about the human rights of such mindless creatures. Maybe they had a point, maybe not, but it was an absolutely fascinating new discovery nonetheless. Here at Rebel Biological Labs, we've taken a balanced approach to moving forward. We've used the early results from Hunter Tuck Island to create the basis of our experiments, but started over completely with the rest of the research. To describe it another way, 
We've taken a photo of their finished puzzle, and now we are working hard to put all of the pieces back into the right place. Thanks to a massive loophole, all of our research is perfectly legal, so long as we don't use any exact copies of the Hunter Tuck method, and as long as we aren't hiring any outside test subjects. The only people that we're allowed to test on are ourselves. As intimidating as it could be to have a potential clone running around out there in the world, it's really not that hard to volunteer for experimentation, because to this day, none of the experiments have yielded any living results. That is, until today. As I walked into work that morning like I would on any other day, swiping my keycard through the laboratory reader and walking past as the door automatically opens with a soft hiss. I say hello to the security guards and continue down a long hallway into the depths of the facility until I reach lab 243, a highly secretive and high clearance area. I swipe my card again and enter. Kirk, shouts one of my colleagues, Dr. Porter, as he sees me. He opens his arms wide and stands up from his row of computers to greet me with a warm hug. <laughs> Those don't happen anymore. Today's the big day. I know, I say with a laugh. I'm up to bat. Dr. Parter motions me over to his lead computer and types in a few quick commands. A bright blue display of cloning schematics popped up onto his computer screen. My eyes go wide the second that I see what he has planned. Oh, whoa. It's great, isn't it? Dr. Porter offers with an excited smile. The cloning process on the surface is fairly simple to accomplish, but not in the way that we want to do it. Anyone can extract some DNA and place it into an egg, creating a new version of you at birth that'll take nine months to gestate and then come out as a beautiful, bouncing baby. However, for our practical application of cloning worker drones or... and other... What? However, for our practical application of cloning worker drones or and other specific job for that matter... I think it's supposed to say any, or any other spe specified job for that matter, we need our clones to emerge at the same age as the subject. In other words, I'm a 22-year-old man, and we need my worker drone to be as well. The problem with this is that the rapid, almost instantaneous cell growth is far from stable. Instead of fully complete drones, we've been creating strange and disturbing piles of lifeless flesh, or worse. If I wasn't so interested in science and human progress, then I would be horrified, but instead I find myself in utter fascination with every passing experiment. Of course, some positive results would be great, but each failed trial is just another brick in the road towards a result. What a positive mindset, you know? This guy is so driven to success. That's how winners think. Lately, we've been trying to keep the rapid cell growth stable by combining the DNA with small markers from various animals, as well as taking them from different specific regions of the human body. Today's trial, which I have been randomly selected for as a subject, is going to take DNA from my brain, my ass, and a hawk. What a combination, I say aloud with a laugh. Dr. Porter shrugs. Oh, the last time I was in there, we tried my arm, my lung, and a catfish. And, I question, curiously, we got a very creepy balloon-type thing flopping around. Dr. Porter shrugs. Had to be put down immediately. When I hear stuff like that, it makes me slightly nervous about the way that we've started playing God here at Rebel Laboratories. You know what? Dr. Chuck Tingle doesn't capitalize God. I can't decide if I respect his cojones or not. On one hand, I really do understand the history-making application of what we have going on here, but on the other, it can be a little unsettling sometimes. I leave and meet with our resident nurses for some time, who take all of the required samples from my body while Dr. Porter prepares the hawk. Six hours later, we meet back in the lab. How's it look? <laughs> That's him. How's it looking? I ask Dr. Porter. Good, very good, he nods. The DNA's been synthesized and it's already inside the egg. I looked through a large glass window before us that stares into a sterilized chamber, completely white and almost entirely empty, other than a table, a large synthetic egg, and some injection equipment. It's already in? I ask excitedly. For how long? Ten minutes, Dr. Porter says. Should be ready to come out any minute now. Normally, the gestation period takes no longer than ten minutes, so if we don't see any results soon, our chances of success go down drastically. I lean forward peering into the chamber with rapt attention. 
I'm used to failure by now, but that doesn't mean that moments like this are any less tense. The seconds turn into minutes, and soon Dr. Porter and I are relaxed, talking to one another about the next genetic combination that we're going to try. It's over. The fact that there was no result at all was probably because of the brain cells, says Dr. Porter. It's just too delicate of an organ. We never get what we're looking for when we add that to the cocktail. I don't know, I start. I think that the brain's our only chance. We need to look at whatever's happening in the bird DNA. Other birds have had great results, but the hawk is just not happening for some reason. Dr. Porter's about to refute my statement and gets his mouth halfway open before suddenly there's a loud slam against the glass behind us. Oh, now I get the, the album cover. <laughs> Dr. Porter and I jump in surprise, immediately looking up to find a rather large winged butt hovering in the air just inside of the glass. Hey there, says the butt. You think you could let me out of here? I'm freezing my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Hey there, says the butt. You think you could let me out of here? I'm freezing my ass off. The rump chuckles to himself. My partner and I exchange glances of excitement. Of course, Dr. Porter says, running over to the containment chamber and opening it up. Welcome. The flying butt flaps its way inside and then lands on the desk in front of us. Hello. Congratulations, you're our first sentient creation, Dr. Porter says, extending his hand to the butt, who takes it with his wing and shakes firmly. Happy to be here, says the ass, but you can call me Kirk's butt. You know that you're my butt, I ask. Of course I do, says my winged ass. I'm made from your brain, I know everything that you know. A slight chill runs down my spine. I hadn't realized that all of my deepest secrets would suddenly be transplanted into this butt. I try my best, but I'm still a flawed man with a penchant for running out on relationships and taking practical jokes too far. Aren't we all? Don't worry. I'm not going to spill the beans. My butt says with a wink. I nod. Dr. Porter finds himself glancing back and forth between us, clearly picking up on the vibe that's being established. After many nights out drinking with Dr. Porter, he's proven himself to be a killer wingman, and already he's showing his impeccable support once again. It's been a long day, Dr. Porter says, doing his best to fake a yawn. Your butt can't stay here all night. There's no place to sleep. Why don't you take him home, and then we can pick this up tomorrow morning? I give Dr. Porter a knowing look of thanks, and he smiles back in return. It sounds good to me, my ass says. Yeah, totally, I tell Dr. Porter, then turn to my living butt. You hungry? I've never eaten. It sounds amazing, responds my sentient ass. Let's go. I'm kind of concerned that this guy's... What am I saying? I'm not concerned it's a Chuck Dingle book, but uh, <laughs> the first thing that everyone in the room, it goes to show you, even the scientifically minded, as soon as there's something fuckable no matter what it is we created it instantly take it home and fuck it don't worry about study don't worry about any kind of science our primitive lizard brains have got to smash no matter how smart you are it's kind of beautiful seeing as it as it is his first meal ever i decide to splurge a bit on my butt taking him out to a fancy french restaurant in the hip part of town it would, be usually, nah, it would usually be impossible to get a reservation on such short notice, but thankfully, I know someone who works here, and she's able to pull some strings for us. The next thing I know, I'm sitting across from my own ass, looking deep within his soulful eye. Just one. I'm not sure what to ask you, I confess. I mean, you know everything that I know, right? Pretty much, says the butt, his wings folded neatly beneath him. He takes a long sip from his wine glass, savoring every moment before settling, setting it down back onto the table. But I've never felt it. That. Right there. Felt what? I ask, confused. I have all your memories about drinking wine. I know what to expect when I do it, and I know what it's going to taste like. But I've never truly tasted it for myself, the butt explains. It's incredible. Whoa, I say. That is amazing. I'm actually kind of jealous of you now. Really? Asks my living butt. Why jealous? 
Well, I know we're both 22, but at the same time, you have so much to experience. Everything's going to be new and exciting for you. My butt smiles. Yeah, I suppose it is. Like this fucking steak that I just ordered. I laugh. You're really interested in food, aren't you? Well, I am a butt, my butt jokes. I laugh out loud at this. Ha ha ha. Impressed with his similar sense of humor to my own. For the first time in a long time, I finally feel like I'm sitting across the table from someone who really gets me deep down at the core of my being. It's hard enough dating as a gay man in today's world of casual hookups and reckless flings. I'm looking for something more, and incredibly, I think I might have just found it. That's not to say that my feelings for my living ass aren't sexual. Far from it. The connection that I'm looking for is something that embodies every kind of attraction. If I'm going to be honest, at this very moment, I can barely contain my lust for this suave, sophisticated, living butt. I think it's just suave. Not suave. Even the feature, but it's a French restaurant, so it doesn't matter. Suave. Even the features that I don't directly recognize as my own are absolutely gorgeous, like the brilliant golden wings that sprout from his back. I feel like you need a name, I tell my own butt. I know that you're a part of me, and I love that about you, but you also need an identity of your own. My ass thinks about this proposition for a moment and then nods in agreement. All right, what's my name? How about Poor Torque, I offer. That's a pretty sexy name. Poor Torque, my ass repeats aloud. Yeah, it's very manly, but also seductive. I like that name a lot. <laughs> Poor Torque it is, I laugh. Cheers to that. Agreed. The two of us raise our wine glasses and clink them together. Ding. Right as our steaks arrived, perfectly cooked and rare as can be. I watch as poor Torque slices off a thin, tender strip of meat and then chews it happily, swallowing with complete satisfaction. And, I ask, what do you think? My winged ass smiles. It's incredible. Suddenly I find myself overwhelmed with lust for this incredible butt. I know that this is only the first night we've known each other, but I also know that the feelings I have for this ass are not just some passing phase. This is, as re this is as real as it gets. And if I don't say something now, I will regret it for the rest of my life. Is there anything else you've wanted to experience? I ask poor Torque. The living butt immediately picks up on the weight of my words, eyeing me suspiciously. Yeah, of course, he says. Anything I can help you with? I question, continuing to lead him along. I can immediately tell that poor Torque understands what I'm asking of him, reading between the lines with expert precision. The butt hesitates for a moment and then finally offers, I'd like to try anal. I think I can help you with that, I tell him with a sly grin. The second that we get back to my apartment, all bets are off. Potork and me stumble through the door, kissing frantically as we make our way towards the bedroom. The second that we get inside, I push my living ass down into the, onto the bed and watch as he spreads his majestic wings out behind him. For a living butt, his physique is quite impressive, and I laugh out loud when I realize that I'm only complimenting myself. As I lean in towards Portork, I see a massive cock beginning to grow out of the front of his body, stretching upward until it becomes a fully engorged shaft. Impressive, I tell the flying butt. Hey, I got it from you, Portork says with a wink. Seconds later, I open wide and engulf his massive rod in my mouth, taking his shaft down as far as I can before pulling back. I do this movement again and then again until eventually I find myself bobbing up and down on his length with a confident rhythm. You know, I read these books and sometimes I wonder, what would my mother do if she ever found this video? If she stumbled across this one day, she doesn't use the YouTubes, but dad does. Dad looks at stuff on YouTube all the time. I wonder what would happen if they... <laughs> Son, it's time for a talk. <laughs> uh... Okay. My living butt is clearly enjoying himself, groaning loudly as he pushes back onto the bed and stretches his wings. Oh my god, says poor Torque. That's so fucking good. I pull the butt's cock out of my mouth just long enough to tell him, just wait. 
and then swallow his shaft completely, pushing down as far as I can. When poor Torque's rod hits my gag reflex, I do everything that I can to relax. <sighs> Somehow managing to let his incredible size slip past my barrier. Shout out to Badlands Chugs. Now my face is pressed hard against his ass cheeks, his dick fully inserted into my throat. Poor Torque puts his wings against the back of my head and keeps me here for a while, enjoying the control that he has over me. My throat is stuffed completely. No sound and no air. But just when I'm about to start worrying, my ass lets me up with a huge gasp. <gasps> I need you to fuck me, I suddenly admit in a haze of lustful desperation. I need to be pounded up the ass by my own ass. I climb up in onto the bed past poor Torque and frantically remove my clothes, tearing off my shirt, pants, and underwear while the flying butt flaps around the room and observes my toned body. Looking good, poor Torque tells me. I give a bashful smile and then lean forward on my hands and knees, completely naked with my toned muscular ass popped out behind me. I reach back and give myself a pay playful slap on the cheek, then look back at poor Torque. I'm just a bad little twink, I admit to it. And I need to be slammed from behind. I need to be taught a lesson by my own flying gay ass. With pleasure, Pork Tor poor Torque tells me, flapping down and perching atop my butt. He quickly aligns the head of his cock with my puckered rectum, teasing the edge of my tightness with his impressive length. Do it, I command. Shove it in there! Immediately, poor Torque rushes forward, impaling me onto his sizable length, his rod is certainly impressive, but it's also a little difficult to reckon with, filling my entire body with a swirling rush of ecstasy and aching discomfort. The rim of my butthole can barely accommodate the cock size of this magnificent cloned ass, but it does its best, stretched to the limit as poor Torque pushes even deeper into me. Eventually, poor Torque comes to a stop, my own ass completely buried deep within my own ass. I let out a long, agonizing groan as my living butt holds there, and then brace myself against the bed before me while he begins to flap his wings and pump in and out. Soon, poor Torque has found a steady rhythm, pulsing in and out of my rectum with a powerful precision that's unlike any human lover I've ever experienced. The connection erupting between us right now is more than just one form of depraved lust. It's an expression of pure, unfiltered love in its rawest form. The love between a man and his own living ass. Fuck, that feels so good! I cry out as poor Twerk hammers away at my backside with his thick, girthy cock. You're so deep! Eventually, my winged living butt pulls out of me and instructs me to turn over on the bed so that I'm now laying out on my back. I pulled my legs back, my cock jutting upward from my body, and my now reamed asshole exposed to my other asshole. Porthork flutters into position and inserts his rod yet again, picking up where he left off as the disembodied butt continues to rail away at me. As Porthork plows my hole from the front, I reach down and start to beat off my cock frantically, the sensation immediately almost too much to bear. It's a strange pleasure, a powerful blossoming prostate orgasm that blooms from somewhere deep within my body and spreads across me in an awesome wave. Oh god, I start to mumble, my eyes rolling back into my head. Oh god, oh god, I'm gonna come. Immediately, Portork stops and pulls his lengthy rod out of me. Not like this, he says. I want you to blow your load inside of me. The flying ass immediately takes a position at the edge of the bed, his butthole hanging over and ready for pounding. I position myself for entry, grasping a hold of his beautiful muscular ass cheeks as I plow forward to enter his death. I let out a long cry of satisfaction as his ass consumes me, then get to work throttling poor Torque with a series of jackhammer-like slams against his body. I'm quaking, trembling hard as I edge closer and closer towards a painful, powerful <laughs> orgasm. And finally, I explode within him. I grab hold of my disembodied ass and pull him close, my length entirely inserted within poor Torque's tightness as I eject load after load. My whole being is consumed by blinding pleasure unlike anything I've ever felt, and the sensations overwhelming every sense that I have until I feel as though I've left my body completely... 
Eventually, my massive jizz load is just too much to contain, and it comes squirting out from the edge. It runs down the crack of my living ass's ass and drips onto the bed below in splatters of pearly white. And when I finally pull out my spunk sprays everywhere, unable to remain contained. <laughs> Disgusting. Fuck, I groan. I love coming in my own asshole. Potork flutters up to the level of my face, his hard cock at the ready as he drips stray cum from his butt. Now how about your own asshole comes inside of you? Now how about your own asshole comes inside of you, he offers. I smile, then open wide, allowing Portork passage into my mouth once again. It only takes a few pumps before my lover is ready to blow, and the next thing I know, he's pulling out and shooting several hot... <laughs> <laughs> shooting several hot ropes of jizz across my face that's a really good way to <laughs> the first shot lands across my tongue and i swallow hungrily whilst the other two blasts hit either cheek and then hang down in sticky white droplets finally finished me and my own ass colla ass collapse into bed exhausted I reach over and grab some tissues, cleaning up as quickly as I can, and then pulling my living ass close, falling asleep with the handsome science experiment in my arms. When I wake up the next morning, I immediately notice a mysterious absence in the bed. Dude, he got pumped and dumped. I sit up and look around, throwing back the covers to make sure poor Torque hasn't simply slipped down below. My living ass is nowhere to be found. Poor Torque, I call out into the empty apartment. I climb out of bed and walk into the living room where a small note's been neatly folded and left on the coffee table. I pick it up and read it aloud. Hold on. Kirk, thank you so much for the wonderful night. I really appreciate you sharing so many new and exciting experiences with me. Unfortunately... Despite the love that we share for one another, I must now go. There's a whole world out there, and I need to see it on my own, without a relationship holding me back. Tears are welling up in my eyes now. I've been on the other side of this letter many times, writing the words for some one-night stand to find in the morning. This couldn't make more sense, though, after all. Poor Tork and me are the same person who's unable to commit. Now I know what it feels like. I turn around and jump suddenly as I see my living ass in the bedroom doorway. He'd been hiding this whole time. What the fuck? I ask in startled joy. What is this? I know that we both have a knack for running out on relationships, poor Torque tells me. But we also know love when we can see it. A broad smile crosses my face. I see you also picked up my habit of inappropriate practical jokes. Poor Torque laughs. <laughs> of course. Now get in here and fuck me. It's time for round two. That's the end. That was the end of Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt by the good doctor Chuck Tingle. Now, what I was talking about in the beginning was that uh, this looks like it has a sequel. Um... There is a, another book, and I think it's the one I'm going to read next. Um, it's called Pounded in... Hold on, i got to make sure I get it right. Um, it's called Pounded in the Butt by my book, Pounded in the Butt by my own butt. <laughs> by Dr. Chuck Tingle. I'm not going to read this one right now because it looks like it's a lot longer, or... That doesn't mean anything on these Tingle books because half the pages are usually just the other books that he's written. But it definitely has a smaller scroll bar than Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt does. So I don't want to spend that much time reading this smut. But um, I think that's the next one I'm going to do is the ultimate inception, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt, Pounded in the Butt by My Book, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt, How Much Butt... Could a butt chuck chuck if a butt chuck could chuck tingle? Um, that's next. Now, for the book club review this week, what I want you to do is go back through Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt and uh, 
take notes on the wide ethical issues of cloning and the societal effects of a cloned population and its negative effects on the immigrant population and write a 5,000 word essay about that before next week. Um, that's your assignment for, for, uh, pounded in the butt by my own butt. No, that was a good one. I, I think I liked the Bigfoot one a little more. Uh, and the Tide Pod one is still my favorite so far. Uh, even though the Bigfoot one starts to open up the, the Tingleverse a little bit and we get some potential for crossover and we're about to get some crossover with the next book. Um, I don't know. This one was good, but it wasn't like guy fucking a Tide Pod in a car wash good. That one had a better statement, I think. But what do I know? I'm no Chuck Tingle. Thanks for enjoying Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt. This has been a grand old time. <laughs>